Hey everyone, this is Kai Werner and today I want to talk about data streaming versus Lakehouse. Lakehouse in the end is this new term where you merge the capabilities of a data lake and a data warehouse. And data streaming is the foundation of any kind of real-time processing and enabling data consistency between real-time and non-real-time systems. The Lakehouse is typically only used for analytical use cases, while data streaming supports operational and analytical use cases and unifies them. Let's get started. I want to explain first one more time what data streaming is, because there are so many misconceptions. The foundation of that is an event-driven architecture. This is not something new, but exists for 20 plus years with message brokers. But data streaming brings a few fundamental differences into this play. So I always explain data streaming as being four pillars. Number one, it's about real-time messaging. That's pretty similar to what you know from your favorite message broker from the last decades. But the differences are that with data streaming, you can do this at any scale. So really meaning also millions of messages per second, gigabytes per second. And also you can do this, again, not just for analytics, but also for transactional workloads. Data stream streaming even has a transaction API and exactly once capabilities for critical use cases like payments where you shouldn't lose a single message. But that's just one point. The second point about data streaming is the persistence layer. So all these events you get in the system and out of the system are persisted as long as you want. You can choose this per business object and define a retention time. This might be only a few hours for some log data or IoT sensor data until it's processed. But this can be days, weeks, months or years for critical data. Because very often you don't want to touch the mainframe or ERP system again and again and again for cost and scalability reasons. And so you can keep the data in the streaming platform and consume it from there with your favorite technology and API, no matter if the consumer is real-time, batch or request response. And this is the unique difference to message brokers, this combination of being real-time at its core with very low latency, even at scale, but also persisting these events so that you can pull the data when you need, no matter if it's now or later, or maybe you even need to travel back in time and play back a bunch of data at one time. Additionally, data streaming is about data integration. So typically with a message broker, you need yet another integration tool, an ETL tool, an enterprise service bus, or in the cloud, an integration platform as a service or short iPaaS. With data streaming, you can do data integration as part of the protocol and integration layer within one single platform. This is why it's really seen as a data streaming platform to provide all these capabilities together. And integration really means to any kind of system, both the more traditional approach, like your favorite relational database, where you could also do change data capture. You can access your mainframe files. You can access your ERP system. And on the other side, you can connect into any cloud native service, like an object store or a cloud lake house or any kind of other B2B cloud application like a cloud CRM. And last but not least, data streaming is about data processing. So very often you shouldn't send all the data to the right side in raw data. You should process it before. And this is where stream processing comes into play to continuously process and correlate data from one or more different data sources and business objects. And this can be used for just integration purposes like ETL, aggregations or filtering, or it can be used to build decisioning engines. So really business applications for fraud prevention, predictive maintenance, customer recommendations. You can even embed AI into the stream processor where you do the model inference. So this together is data streaming. And this is so important to understand before we even compare it to the lake houses. From a technology perspective, it's pretty clear, right? So Apache Kafka became the de facto standard for data streaming. This open source framework is used by over 150,000 organizations today. In parallel, we see a similar adoption of Apache Flink, 
always compared to the download statistics around four years later than Kafka, it get the same stats. So this makes total sense because before you can process data as an event, you need to have the pipelines, right? But this is now the combination we see more and more in the market using Apache Kafka and Apache Flink to build a data streaming platform or obviously to leverage an existing vendor or cloud software as a service using these technologies. And now let's compare this to a lake house. Because first of all, if you take a look at the vendor websites, the stories are always all the same, right? They have all the same use cases, the same capabilities, and it's really hard to understand when you should choose which platform. And actually the good news is even they're actually complementary. There is not that many overlaps as you might think from the marketing slides. Let's start with the data streaming platform. Again, so the de facto standards are Kafka and Flink from an open source perspective. And then Confluent is the leading vendor, but there's obviously also many, many other players here now because data streaming is really a paradigm shift in a new software category. No matter which vendor open source framework you choose, data streaming is best for processing data in motion. It's event driven. All the systems are decoupled and you can take action on events when you need or want to, no matter where it's coming from and where it's going to and what technologies you use besides data streaming. And a few examples here like real-time analytics and monitoring when you build your dashboards, live event processing and alerting. So this is really not just showing one raw data set, but combining different data sets, correlating them and only showing relevant data like a threshold if something is wrong, if there's an anomaly. But as I also said, this is not just for analytics. This is also for transactional processing, like a payment, an order, and similar scenarios. That's also why actually many core banking platforms or MES and ERP systems are built on top of Kafka and Flink under the hood. As an end user, you often don't see that because you buy a product or cloud service. But this is how you build transactional systems today. Reliable, scalable, elastic, and real-time. And it's the same for AI. You can do AI in the data streaming world and in the lake house, but where should you use it? Well, if you want to continuously take action like predictions, if you have transactional capabilities or requirements, if you need low latency, then you should do model inference in your data streaming platform. On the other side, let's talk a little bit about a lake house. And again, this is more sometimes coming more from the data warehouse space and evolving like Snowflake, or it's coming from the data lake approach and also supporting data warehouses. It's merging more and more. And it's also going more from only batch to supporting more near real-time use cases. This is also what confuses people more, right? But still, no matter which product you take a look at, another one coming up more and more is Microsoft Fabric, where at the time of the recording, it's more marketing, right? But in the future, there's more investment into having a mature and solid product, I guess. But the point is all of these, even though the use cases look very similar to what you see on a data streaming website, in the end, the reality is the first thing you do is always store the data at rest, typically in an object store today in the cloud. And this means you process data after the fact. You first persist it, and then you request the data with a Python script, with an HTTP API call, or with some UIs. And this can be very different personas, data engineers, data scientists, developers, and so on. But the sweet spot of lake houses naturally is about storing data at rest and then doing analysis on historical data, doing reporting business intelligence with your favorite tool on top of these like Tableau or Click. But also then obviously the long-term storage and retrieval. And you can then also connect this to other search engines and so on. And AI is big here. And these kind of technologies have strong capabilities for AI platforms. Data processing, model training, which is typically a batch process, and also model inference. So you can do some of these workloads both in the streaming platform and in the lake house. So on a high level, really, you see here a few of the sweet spots where data streaming is better for processing data in motion and where the lake house is better for data at rest. And still, there's some overlaps, but if you have critical data, if you need low latency, 
If you want to provide access to data to different systems, not just in a single system, that's on the right side. If you collect all data and store it at rest in one system, you can only process it there. Or you even do a reverse ETL, which is another anti-pattern. So if you process it more on the left side in the architecture, while the data is in motion, you can take action for transactional workloads. And you can also feed into one or more lake houses for other purposes. So it's really, really complementary in most scenarios. Just use both the right way and combine them. And talking about combining them, there is one more trend in the market I want to talk about here. Apache Iceberg. Or more general, open table format. There is a few others out there. But the point is, you store data only once in an open table format. No matter where the data is coming from, it can come from the left side from data streaming or it can come from the right side via some other batch ETL tools. You store it once in an object store and because it's an open standard table format, you then can query it from your favorite analytics engine. Store once, compute with your favorite engine. And this can even be the data streaming platform. So very often the data comes from the left side. It's processed and then stored in Iceberg. And then you can access it with your analytical tools on the right side. But you can then even use the analytics and batch API of Flink to process the data again. You store it in an Iceberg table once and every tool that supports it can use it without any further coding. So you don't need any connectors then anymore. It's much, much easier for the end user and much less costly because you only store it once. And this is a big piece of the picture of the future enterprise architecture, because in conclusion, data streaming and lake houses have their own sweet spots and they are complementary, no matter which open source frameworks or cloud services or vendors you choose. I hope this was a helpful session for you. Please also share your feedback or questions in the video or reach out to me, stay in touch on LinkedIn and X or subscribe to my newsletter where I publish new content about use cases, trends and architectures around data streaming every one or two weeks without any kind of spam or ads in there. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope this was a helpful video.